closer home, there is some bad news for India. The Maldives has elected a new president, Mohammad Muizu. He defeated the sitting president, Ibrahim Soli. But why is that bad news for India? Because Muizu was a pro-China candidate and now he's a pro-China president-elect. The results were announced this weekend. It is the second round between Soli and Muizu. The first round was on the 9th of September last month. Neither candidate crossed 50%. But this time, Muizu did. He got 54% of the vote. The incumbent Soli got 46% votes. As the result came in, Prime Minister Narendra Modi congratulated Muizu, one of the first leaders to do so. And this is what he said. Let me quote. India remains committed to strengthening the time-tested India-Maldives bilateral relationship and enhancing our overall cooperation in the Indian Ocean region. Let me tell you why the Maldives is important. It is an archipelago in the Indian Ocean, meaning it's a chain of islands. And the Indian Ocean is the nerve center of global trade. Around 80% of oil is shipped via this ocean. The Maldives is like a toll gate on this route. Historically, it's been part of India's sphere of influence, but now China wants it. Beijing has been trying to reduce Indian influence in the Indian Ocean. They already have key assets in Sri Lanka. The Maldives could be next. India and President Soli together kept China at bay. But will the new president do the same? And here's why I ask. Muizu belongs to the PPM, the Progressive Party of Maldives. His mentor is former President Abdullah Yamin. Yamin was supposed to run for president this time, but he was disqualified. He was convicted in jail for corruption. And that's how Muizu got the job. Now, the PPM is not just pro-China. Their party, it's not just pro-China, it's also anti-India. It's the same party that came up with the India Out campaign. That was what, that's what their campaign was called, India Out. It seeks to end Indian influence in the Maldives. President Soli was the opposite. He openly declared that his policy was India first. So you have two very different positions. One was India first and the other was India Out. And who won? India out. Mohammad Mizu has been a minister in the past in the Maldives and during that stint he signed multiple deals with China. One of these deals was worth 200 million dollars. It connected the capital to the main airport. He also met Chinese Communist Party officials last year. He said his party's comeback would strengthen relations between China and the Maldives. Does that mean he will abandon India? I guess as much as he can, he will try. New Delhi has given $3 billion to the Maldives. That's loans plus aid. There are schools being built, bridges, stadiums, hospitals, all kinds of projects. So divorcing India is not an option. The footprint is simply too big. But here's what Muizu and company can do. Make China's footprint bigger. Beijing wants a free trade agreement with the Maldives. Soli had refused to play ball. His successor may not. Same with Chinese investments. Soli preferred Indian companies and military equipment. Chances are his successor will not. So there is no point in denying the reality this is a strategic setback for India. But is it also the end of the road? Well, that's too early to say. What happens next depends on a number of factors. For instance, is Mohammed Muizu his own man? Or will he be controlled by Abdullah Yamin? The early signs are not good. After winning the election, Muizu spoke to Ibrahim Soli. He got Yamin released from jail. He's now under house arrest. And this is a big worry for New Delhi because for Yamin, taking on India is not just about policy. It somehow seems personal. The other factor rather here is India's attitude. Do we pull back from the Maldives? Or do we keep engaging irrespective of Muizu's attitude? Prime Minister Modi's message on Sunday was a positive sign. There was no hesitation or delay. Like I said, he was one of the first to congratulate Muizu, and the key is to build on that. No, there won't be the same enthusiasm from the other side. Yes, the new president will be closer to China, but not engaging could make things worse. It would give Beijing a free pass. So India needs to dig deep, India needs to pull out cards that China cannot, like historical relations, the cultural exchange, the people-to-people -people relations. All of this could give India a fighting chance. 
Also, this election is a lesson for Indian policymakers. Do not take neighbors for granted. You can't bank on just one political party. You need multi-partisan support. If not, this is the risk. And these are very important relationships for India. As the government says, it's neighborhood first. But for that, you need broad support from ordinary people, from the opposition, and of course, the ruling party. Clearly, India does not have that in the Maldives. The new president, Moizu, takes charge only in November, but his actions until then should give us an idea about India's future in Mali. Whether it's back a few steps or back to square one, 